Hello, this is Mr. Sandsbury. I'm going to take you through some of the problems on the 12H assignment. All right, we're going to start off here with number one, following parallel box plots, compare the times it, time students in years 9 and 12 spend on homework. Copy and complete. So year 9 is this one up here, the minimum. Let's see, this is 30. Let's see, was it uh, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25? Nope, it goes, looks like it goes by 6. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30. So these go by sixes. 36. That's right in the middle there. So let's see. That's going to be 90 minus 6 is going to be, what, 84, 96, and then somewhere out in the middle. Okay. So anyway, with the uh, pink one here, year 9, minimum is 6. Quartile 1 is at 30. The median... 36. Let's see, this is 6 more for 42. That's about halfway in between, so we'll add half of 6, which is 3, so that's going to be 45, roughly. And then 60 is quartile 3. Maximum is plus 12 is 72. Okay. For year 12, minimum is 36. Uh, quartile 1 is 60. Median, 84. And then top quartile three is 96. And then it looks like it goes out to about, again, almost about halfway through in there. So 96 plus another six is what? 102, 105, we'll call it. Okay, so that's that should be pretty close to what we, uh, what we need to be at there. Okay. Um, part C, determine whether the following statements are true or false. And if there's not, or if there's not enough information to tell. On average, year 12 students spend about twice as much time on homework as year nine students. So, um, gosh, that's not the easiest thing to tell. I mean, you can look at the median, but it's such a wide range. 36 to 105, or 45 to 72. Gosh, I don't know. I would I would say that's probably not enough information to tell. Let's see if the back of the book agrees with us. Okay, yeah, the back of the book uh, agrees with us. There's not quite enough to tell. I mean, it looks like it's pretty close to about twice as much, but you can't quite tell. So not enough information. NEI will go with that. Okay. Uh, next one, number three, after the final exam, the results of two classes studying the same subject were compiled in this parallel box plot, plot. And which class was the highest mark? That would be class one, right? Because that looks like that's up at what, 96% or 96 points. The lowest mark was also in class one. And that looks like that mark was what? Looks like that's about 37. Okay. Um, which one is there a larger spread of marks? That would um, be class one as well. Because look, the highest and the lowest. And then also really your quartile three to quartile one looks bigger than it, this quartile three to quartile one. So bigger, bigger spread of uh bigger spread of marks, as they call it, would be class one. Find the interquartile range of class one. So that's going to be the ah, quartile three is 70. Quartile one, it looks like is at 52. So 70 minus, oops, 52. That uh, was 52. There we go. Gives us 18. So the interquartile range is going to be 18. And then find the range of class two. So that would be the highest to the lowest. So that looks like that's that looks like that's 93 or 94. And then this down here looks like this is at 38. So we would do 93. Oops, man, I'm struggling. Minus 38 is going to give us 55 would be the range for class two. OK. Uh, students who scored at least 70% received an achievement award. Find the percentage of students who received an award in class one. So at least 70%. So that's this right here. This line up above this line is going to be the achievement award. Remember, each part of the 
box and each whisker is 25%. So that's going to be 25% of the data here. So 25% in class one received the award. This one here, this whisker is 25%. And also this top um, quartile here, well, court, from the median to quartile three is also another 25%. So they end up with 50% got an award. Okay. All right, um, number four, data below are the durations in minutes of Kristen and Erica's last 25 phone calls. Find the five number summary for each data set and display the data in a parallel box plot. Okay, so we can put this into either the scientific or the graphing calculator. Um, since we have more scientific calculators in class, I'm gonna show that, but it's essentially the same um, process for doing it in the graphing calculator as well. So in the scientific calculator, you want to go to data, but there's already data in there. So to get rid of it, I push data again, and I'm going to clear list one. So I push enter, and now list one is clear. And now I'm going to go through and enter all that into the list one. <coughs> Excuse me, and I'll probably enter all the data for Erica into list two as well, and then we can find the uh, data for each of those. I'm going to pause this so you don't have to watch me type all this stuff in. Okay, so I entered all the data in and it's a, relative, it's a good sign that I have. It's asking for what the 26th piece is. It says that there's 25 calls, so I got 25 for both of those. Um, it's pretty important to make sure that you get the right data in here, otherwise your, your numbers are going to be off a bit. So uh, anyway, got everything in there, and it says find the five number summary for each data set. So now we're going to want to go second data, which is statistics. And we really just want to find the data for each set. So it's still one variable statistics, one. And right now I just want to come up with the data for list one. So I push enter for list one. The frequency is just one, so I push enter again, and then calculate. And now I'm going to come up with the five number summary for each set. So I'm going to want to go down until I find minimum, quartile one, median, all that kind of good stuff. So we got 0 0.8, 1.3. So let's see, uh, min, quartile one, median, quartile three, max. And then we'll do that for both Kristen and Erica, right? So let's make ourselves a little chart here so we can keep stuff organized. And then away we go. Okay. So back to our calculator. We've got 0 0.8, 1 1.3, and 2.3. Okay. And then also for quartile 3 is 3.3 .3 and then 6.9. Okay, there's our five number summary for Kristen. And then to do the same thing for Erica, we simply just go back to second data. We're still going to do one variable stats. And now our data is in list two. So we're going to want to go over to list two, push enter, go down for one. That's what we want to keep. And then calculate. And then scroll down until we get our the info that we want, right? 0 0.2, 2.2, 2 and 3.7. And then 5.7 and 11.5. Okay, so we did A, that's this right here. B, display the data in a parallel box plot. So we want to get basically from 0 to 11.5 minutes, right? So let's do, uh, let's make ourselves a nice long chart here. We got 0. And do what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve is as high as we need to go, right? And then we don't have to label every single one. We just want to label enough so we know, oops, not ten again, where everything's at. And then now we can simply make our box plots. So for Kristen, the minimum is 0 0.8, so we'll go about right here. I'm going to leave room underneath so that I can put uh, Erica's underneath as well. Um, and then we're at 1.3. The next one is a line. That, so remember, these three in here, 
these three in here are all going to be the lines, right? And this is going to be a dot for the end of the whisker, and this is going to be a dot, oops, a dot for the end of the whisker there as well. Okay, so uh, 2.3 is our next line, and again, as long as you're in the right neighborhood, you're, you should be good to go. And then 3.3, .3, and then the max was at 6.9. Okay, so once we get our three lines, we connect, make a box, and then connect our whiskers. And there is Kristen's. And then Erica's is going to be down here. The lowest was 0 0.2. And then we got 2.2 as .2 our first line, 3.7 is here, and then 5.7 is up here, and then 11.5 was the longest. Okay, so then again we'll make our, connect our lines there to make some rectangles, and there's our, there are our two parallel box plots. Okay? All right, that's all we have for the 12H worked problems. If you have any further questions, please feel free to ask. Thanks.